Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about something that came up in a recent analysis by Digital Foundry, who analyzed Splatoon 2 to see you know, how big of an upgrade it is over the original Splatoon, and if it's worthy of having that sequel term to it. You know, th there's a lot of people just feeling like it's basically the first game with a fresh coat of paint. And that doesn't appear to be the case. But we're not here to talk about Splatoon 2 and get in depth about, you know, our feelings on that yet because I haven't played it yet. However, one thing they brought up during that analysis that was extremely interesting to me was that they have analyzed uh, 71 of the Nintendo Switch games, which according to them was every single game at the time they created that video on the North American and European eShop. So with 71 titles there, they claim that 80% of that library runs at 60 FPS. In fact, you know, they brought up this point to back up a statement from them that the Switch is kind of sort of becoming a 60 FPS console. And this whole conversation got started because Splatoon 2 is a 60 FPS game. And it's a constant 60 FPS game that hasn't dropped a single frame. In fact, how the game does it is it has a dynamic resolution scaler, which we've seen in other games before. Uh, but Nintendo has been really getting into the dynamic resolution scalers recently. So basically, the Splatoon 2 will run anywhere from 1080p all the way down to 862p, which, yes, is higher than 720p. Then, obviously, in handheld mode, it runs at 720p, and it will dip somewhere below that down to, like, 656p or whatever it is. But the reality is they do that to maintain the 60fps goal. And this is really... This is something I want to talk about because 60fps matters. And I know... Some people out there cannot perceive the difference between 30 FPS and 60 FPS. And that's okay. I'm not here to tell people who can't tell the difference that 60 FPS is the greatest gift to man. But there are a lot of people that can tell the difference. And it becomes especially noticeable when you're at 60 FPS and then a game drops to 40 FPS, then jumps back up to 60. Just as just as jarring, believe it or not, as when 30 FPS drops down to the teams and pops back up. It's very, it really kicks you out of the experience. And with 80% of the Switch's library up to this point being at, you know, that 60 FPS mark, it is one of those things that I think Nintendo is doing better than the competition it's not the most powerful box in the world but we've had 60 fps going back to the nes era at least i'm not quite sure you know how the atari games ran i haven't done the examining or research on that but i know back in the day back in the nes days most of the nes library ran at 60 fps so this isn't even a question of hardware capabilities right i always hear a lot of tech enthusiasts and video game enthusiasts conversations out there i'm just waiting for that system that allows me to run at 1080p at 60 fps well 60 fps has been able to be done this whole time 1080p has been able to be done this whole time the question is what do you have to sacrifice to hit those targets nintendo could easily have splatoon 2 run at 1080p and 60 fps in docked mode all the time they could also have it run at 720p at 60 fps in undocked mode all the time but you know what would they have to sacrifice visually to accomplish that and you need to find a balance and if you're going to choose resolution or fps a lot of companies go for resolution, and you really should be targeting FPS because gameplay is why people play, right? Gameplay affects how a player plays the game. From that button press to that action on screen, the higher the frame rate, the better. So Nintendo is really emphasizing the 60 FPS, and we saw it in the Wii U era as well, right? We know that Mario Kart 8, the, um, sorry, Mario Kart 8, or the original on Wii U, Ran at 60 FPS. I mean, really, it was 59 FPS because every other 60 frames, it would drop half a frame for some reason. It was some glitch, but whatever. And that's just a, an example of, of plenty of other titles that ran at 60 FPS. Now, obviously, Breath of the Wild runs at 30 FPS. Could it have hit 60 FPS if it had been Switch exclusive? Who knows? But what I am kind of getting at here is I'm extremely happy that on a Nintendo platform, 
they have emphasized, and apparently other indie developers and third-party developers are emphasizing this as well, that 60 FPS is extremely important for both portable and docked mode with Nintendo Switch. It is something that I honestly wish Sony and Microsoft would take a stance with as well. I wish they would look at things and be like, look, we might not hit true 4K on the Xbox One X, but we can have a dynamic resolution scaler or you know checkerboard rendering or, or whatever the case may be and be able to hit 60 fps in every single game we release and obviously nintendo hasn't done it in every single game but they're emphasizing it in a majority of their games and i really 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 want to see microsoft and sony take note that 60 fps matters because i think at this point a lot of companies sacrifice fps and are fine with 31 because probably half the gaming community is fine with 30 fps and secondly because they want to focus on the crispness of the image which has to do with resolution and they obviously want to focus with as much visual effects and physics and you know pretty looking visuals that they can and that's fine and dandy but i think if collectively the gaming developers got together and said look we can make as pretty games as we want if they hit 60 fps because 60 fps especially on consoles is better for everyone so I really want to see that Switch kind of maybe leading the headway for other companies, other third-party companies, to, to realize that 60 FPS matters. And it's not going to matter at the mainstream level until the companies decide that it matters. Because, as I said, there's so many people that can't tell the difference. They're not going to know what they're missing until games consistently run at 60 FPS on home consoles. Uh, and once that happens, a game coming over to 30 FPS is going to seem pretty jarring in comparison. So, anyways, do you agree? Do you agree that Nintendo should be targeting 60 FPS? That the gaming community should be targeting 60 FPS? Does this matter to you? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance from Nintendo Prime. And before I sign out, I just wanted to apologize for having a day without a video and even having this video go up late. I actually have a few ideas roaming in my head for about two or three videos I wanted to get out yesterday and today, but I've been having some issues with my internet that I only solved today after realizing that the problem wasn't with my provider, it wasn't with my modem, it was actually my router, and I'm just throwing this out here because so far it's been an amazing experience I, I got a brand new router today i got the google wi-fi router and i i don't you know i i've been through you know in the last three years i've burned through three routers because there's some bad wiring in my office but you know now that i have everything you know protected properly the issue that i've always had with wi-fi and the issue that I've always had with a home network is that you always have variable speeds. Whether, you know, it doesn't matter if your provider is hitting you with, you know, 100 megabytes per second or whatever the case may be. We have 60. But it's about how much, how consistently you can get that signal out to multiple devices. And in my house, you know, I, right now I'm actually looking at an app. You know, there is, you know, 12 devices connected to my router right now. And running you know several of them at once i am not seeing any performance drops uh whether it's 4k netflix or you know whatever and this is the first time in my entire two years being here and living in this place and you know having my office here that i have been able to stream at 4k on my pc now i know I have streamed 4K Netflix, supposedly, but I question if that ever hit the true 4K that my TV could support. But in my office, I have two 4K monitors. I run it off GTX 1070, and I have never been able to stream YouTube videos at 4K without tons and tons of buffering, which I thought was baffling because I have plenty of internet speed to do that for at least one you know, video at a time, if not two multiple streams. Like if someone's watching a 4K Netflix in another room and I'm watching 4K YouTube, I should be able to get native 4K in both spaces, no problem. Well, I've been through a lot of different routers. I went through an Asus router, I went through uh, some Nighthawks, I went through Linksys, uh, all these routers that are pretty expensive. We're talking like $150 to $250. And here I am now with a Google Wi-Fi after getting suggested to it by a friend. 
And having to realize that my router is the issue, why I'm only getting eight megabytes when I should be getting 60. It's crazy. That's like worse than some DSL connections. And then, you know, on Wi-Fi, I was getting nerfed down to 20 uh, when I should be getting, you know, hopefully higher than that. I never expected my Wi-Fi to match my wired, but it turns out that after getting this router, the Google Wi-Fi, my internet now is running at like 75 down which is 15 more than I'm even supposed to get. And I'm now able to upload, you know, at 8 to 10, which again is really, really low. But in my area, you only get those kind of speeds if you pay for a business line. And business lines are like two to three times more expensive than what I pay. And it's weird because Charter in other areas provides even better internet. For some reason here, they just want to handcuff you. It is what it is. They kind of own the market. There's no competition here, basically. There is no other cable internet or you know, even an option for fiber internet in this area. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck with Charter. But still, I am seeing, uh, you know, when I test on my, my mobile device with multiple different speed test apps, I am getting consistently the exact same download speeds as I get on my wired connection. This is exciting for me. Uh, videos should be coming out at a much more rapid pace because I can get all the media I need and work faster and upload faster. Uh, I just, I can, I, this is not a sponsored ad at the end of the post. This is even getting longer than the actual video. I just, I cannot say enough good things about Google Wi-Fi router. And what's cool is you can chain these routers like all over your house. You have a huge house, maybe a 5,000 square foot house. You can chain these things all over the place. So you don't have to buy Wi-Fi extenders. You just buy additional routers that chain off of each other. And it's excellent. It runs at 2.4 and 5 and it's full AC. Uh, and what's cool is there's even this app that you, you know, how normally you, you go to an IP address on your computer and you set all the router settings and stuff. here everything's managed on a phone app, which is excellent. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because I don't know if people realize when they're having issues, how much the router can actually affect it. And now that I finally got a router that's get, doing better for me than I've ever done before, I just want to highly suggest that you know if you're having any issues with your internet consistency with speeds or any of that measure, it might not always be your provider. It possibly could be your router. And the Google Wi-Fi router is surprisingly affordable. Uh, and it's reviewed very, very high. There were several outlets late last year and early this year that have said that it is for the money and even you know not for the money like the best wi-fi router on the market i am now a believer so if you would like to get one i'll have a link down in the description below uh it's extremely affordable i mean i know you know what's affordable when you can get a router for 50 60 bucks but uh if you're looking at the ac route and you want high reliability uh, heck, this even has longer range than it says it did. It said it should only be good for about a 500 to 800 square foot home. Well, my home is 1,200 feet, and I got Wi-Fi everywhere in my house. Plus, I have Wi-Fi, you know, a good, you know, 50 feet from my house, uh, way out in my backyard. So it's, I'm impressed. I am extremely impressed. So again, not a sponsored part here. I just, this is why I haven't been uploading. Uh, and now you're going to see a lot more videos. And I just wanted to let you guys know what I did to fix it uh, and maybe give you guys a suggestion for a product you maybe never heard of, never considered, or never even knew that your router might be holding you back. Uh, as I said, the fact that I can get the same download speeds, wired and wireless, is crazy. But I am so happy, and I will be 4K streaming all over this house, man. All right. Well, I talked enough. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one.